Welcome back to the Protein Snack Shop podcast, y'all. Hope y'all been doing great. Uh, we're excited to have Allie Collins in the studio. Allie's an RN. Um, we have connected with Allie through, um, well, she's you've bought some of our product, um, obviously through some Instagram stuff. She's been a rock star, a big advocate for us, and we love her. Um, so, Allie, walk us through a little bit about uh, your career, the things that you've done. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. For sure. Well, thank you so much for having me on here. I'm just, I am such a huge fan of your brand and what y'all stand for. Um, I am, like you said, a registered nurse. I have had the opportunity to kind of be a jack of all trades in nursing. Um, did a, I've been a nurse for about 13 years and I've done about 10 years in the emergency department. Um, also did a dabbled a little bit in the ICU and mm -hmm. trauma ICU. Um, so I've seen patients go from good, bad to worse. Um, and uh, now, I am able to help patients with their chronic conditions in regards to diabetes and just their overall um, care. So I, um, I've, I've dealt with patients at all stages of their lives. So <laughs> I feel very fortunate. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been throughout the Middle Tennessee region and working. Little sidebar. Um, I think everybody, most of our customers know I've been a pharmacist for a long time. These folks in uh, emergency situation nurses are amazing. Side note is uh, I was a young pharmacist in the hospital freaking out because patients are coding. And here comes the nurse. I mean, they're like chewing bubble gum. It's second nature. <laughs> nurses are literally the cornerstone of our health care. And we love nurses. Yes. And I can't say that enough. And I'm pretty sure everybody listening would agree with that. Yes. Um, My mom was a nurse too. Yeah, we, we're a special breed, although I think being a child of a nurse is almost, I feel, it's kind of unfortunate. I feel bad for my kids. I'm like, oh, your arm, like I'll feel, they're like, my arm hurts so bad. And I'll wiggle. I'm like, nah, we're fine. We're fine. Yeah. <laughs> they're even. You're good. That's you're exactly how I am. Oh, no. <laughs> he makes fun of me because that's how I am because that's how my mom was. Yeah. I was a crazy child. I was the, the only female in our generation of our family. Oh I have two goodness. brothers and all boy cousins. So we would be out on the four wheelers. I mean, doing crazy mountain biking, crazy stuff. And I was right alongside them. I remember one really quick. Uh, we were out four wheeling in the middle of the winter in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And my four wheeler flipped and I had a branch go. I still have the scars that pierced my skin and went up my back. And I just broke it off and kept riding. Oh right. I was like, I'm good. So we got home. And we're taking mom would make us take all of our snowsuits off in the entryway because right. otherwise there would be water Snow everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. So I'm like getting undressed and there's blood just going down the back of my, my leg. And she's just like, what happened? And I'm like, oh, I think there's like a branch in my back. She's like, lay down on the table. <laughs> she just lays me down on the kitchen table and slices me open and pulls it out and rinses it out. And she's like, you're good to go. Yeah. <laughs> Throw a little super glue on it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, that's, we're like a jack of all trades. Yeah. We, we, you know, and it, I always say, I feel like emergency medicine is so much different than just med surge and like those type of nurses, because, you know, we, if we don't know the answer, we'll figure it out. Like mm -hmm. we'll, we'll yeah. figure it out. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a really great um, community to be a part of. Absolutely. Um, well, it's an honor to have you and tell us a little bit. So now you're um, in kind of, you specialize in diabetes. Yep. Yep. So tell us some, a little bit of the trends of diabetes. Um, obviously, you know, 20 years ago when I was getting a pharmacy and uh, trending through it, it's changing all the time. We, you know, the medicines, um, um, the insulin pumps. So kind of tell us where um, the thinking is for diabetes now, where it's heading, how it's trending statistically in America. For so. sure. So um, <clears throat> one of the great things about uh, <laughs> diabetes right now is most of it is um, the protocols and the requirements are all usually from the government. Um, so they they want an A1C somewhere between 7 and 10. Um, and if you're in that range, you're not doing great, but you're not dying. Um, they want to keep you in that range because if you're in that range, you're taking more medications and, you know, you're probably having to go see a specialist more often. And, you know, there's a lot of different facets that um, you're not at your best, but you're not at your worst. So um, we we see a huge trend of type two coming out um, because patients are undereducated in regards to their nutrition and the medications that they're taking. They're taking one medication to fix a problem. Then they're taking another medication mm -hmm. to combat the complications of that one first medication. And it's just like a snowball effect. Um, so we are seeing definitely an increase in type two. We are seeing on a positive more patients getting education from um, certified di diabetic educators, but that's their initial diagnosis 
diagnosis of type 2. So if you think about a patient that maybe is 45 years old, um, they're an overweight, obese man who is going to get their education initially from a large metropolitan hospital. Um, after that, where do they go two years later? Maybe sure. at that point, they want to start taking care of their health. They're doing better and they're, um, they're trying to decrease their medications and um, trying to check their blood sugar more often. Are they going to get additional education? Probably not. No, they'd have to be proactive about it. And most patients just don't know the avenue to go to get that. Um, so I love that, you know, there's different podcasts like this one where they're able to get that information and hopefully be, be able to take control of their health and, you know, stay out of the hospital and get off those medications that are hopefully, you know, maybe not making their life the best. <laughs> Um, some of the right. side side effects are really, really harsh for patients. Um, and if they don't take care of their health, you know, and their diabetes continues to get worse, they're seeing complications in regards to their kidneys and their heart and their vision. Um, and it just, you know, it, it's, it's not a good path to fall down. Well, I feel like because diabetes, it's not an immediate, the repercussions aren't immediate. Right. So <clears throat> at least what I've seen in my practice, they, so they just kind of ignore it. They're like, ah, it's not going to happen to me. Right. But just reaffirm that those apathies will occur, right? Yeah. You can't and, avoid it. And I think it's, there's usually like a coming to Jesus type of moment yeah. where, you know, and I've read a lot of chart notes from patients and when I see that they start wanting to take care of their health, they've either been in the hospital for a prolonged time, they've mm -hmm. been told they're going to lose a toe or a foot mm -hmm. or something to that effect, or that they're not able to drive anymore because they've passed out a few times behind the wheel. And, you know, they're like, oh my gosh, I have to take control of this. And at that point, they're having chronic kidney disease. And, um, you know, they're on such a plethora of medications, they can't afford it anymore. Um, so that's when, you know, they see those those side effects and they're like, oh my goodness, like this, this is not 20 years down the road. This is like yes. in a month and a year or they can't get, let's, a lot of times, you know, people need knee replacements or they want to have an elective surgery and they can't get that because they are a type two and they are a higher risk and a surgeon isn't willing to take a bet on them. Um, so that's when we see a lot of patients that are like, okay, now I'm ready to take control of my health. I'm ready to learn more. Unfortunately, it has to get to that point sometimes in order for them to do that. But even... And not that this is a plug for Protein Snack Shop, but that's a lot of the reason why we came up with our products is because even when those people are at that point and they're like, I need to do something about this, it's very hard to make those changes. It's very hard to give up the sugar, to have to give up all the things that have gotten them to where they're at, right? In, in hindsight, like, yeah, these are the changes that I need to make, but can I really make them? Right, right. Right. Well, so my dad, um, <laughs> not a plug for protein snack shop, but yes, because he is a diabetic. I recently got him um, started on a continuous glucose monitor and he was very against it. It took about six months and he loves candy. Like it is literally his primary food group, which is why his A1C is so high. And he is having a lot of complications. Um, and he just, it got to a point, which I see with a lot of different patients that they don't know what they're their sugar is. And so they just, they're like, I don't understand this. So I'm just going to eat. And if that means I'm done, I'm done. At least I'm going to enjoy what I enjoy. Mm -hmm. But when I introduced him to your cheesecakes, he was like, these, are you sure these are good for me? I mean, these are literally <laughs> so, so good. And he would eat one and he would, he would see that his blood sugar would not you know, spike significantly. It was just staying pretty steady and he felt better opposed to that initial rush. Like when you eat a pack of Skittles and you're like, Oh, I feel good. And then you're and 30 minutes later, crap. Like, crap. Yeah, like, crap. you know, it's yeah. just not great. Um, but this is, this is an answer to, for, at least for him at late at night, he loves to snack. And this is just a great treat that he can look forward to that he knows is mm -hmm. not going to give him bad reper repercussions later down the road. So, uh, for me, like that was a huge win to be able to see it in real time that it didn't spike his sugar and he did feel good. And he had that protein also, which, you know, to keep building those muscles and not not lose that muscle mass is really important. Yeah, we've gotten a couple of videos now of people that have sent in their constant glucose monitor yeah. and it doesn't change. Yeah. And it's very exciting to be a part of that because <clears throat> diabetes is, is a difficult disease. So type two, um, tell us a little bit ab about what that's caused from, how it can, if it can be fixed. Type one is um, autoimmune disorder, right? right so kind yeah. of tell us so, the difference 
um, for the audience what the two differences are and the ramifications of one over the other? For sure. So a type one patient, you know, I've seen patients diagnosed as early as six months old um, up to, you know, a 30 year old who's just had these like lingering symptoms or a lot of times it's um, they notice it after pregnancy or something to that effect. But a type one patient, just their insulin is not producing and there is nothing that they have done to create that problem. Um, So it's not like they've been overeating or they haven't been taking care of themselves. It's something that they are going to have to deal with for their entire life. There is nothing currently that they can do to fix that problem. There's not a medication that they can take, Um, but there are things that can help them take better care of themselves. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of different, um, you know, food programs and also medications that can just help control it. Um, A type two patient, it is more of a lifestyle situation. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, for a lot of patients that we run into, it's just that they've had a year or two of bad decisions and they've just been, you know, especially with COVID, people are at home, they're snacking, they're thinking short term, they're not thinking long term, they're tired and they just want, you know, to to relax and they're overwhelmed. We see it a lot with depression um, and when patients stop, um, stop exercising, stop eating right and also have usually comorbidities of some type, whether it's chronic pain or, um, you know, Sometimes people have broken a leg. They've done something that have, has caused a lifestyle change and then their blood sugar gets out of whack and they're no longer having the steady glycemic um, line with their blood sugar. They're having these spikes and these significant drops. And that's why if you ever hear of people that are having hypoglycemic events, they're saying, you know, I feel so shaky. I feel so dizzy. Um, it's generally that they have type two and um, it, it, it can be reversed with exercise and proper nutrition and they can get off those medications and they can live a normal life. Um, but it can get bad quickly if they don't take care of themselves and they don't get educated. So, um, the main big difference for your viewers is type one. It's something you're born with. It's not something you can change as of right now. There's lots of studies and research going on to try to hopefully, um, you know, change the future and trajectory of type one, but type two is something that is brought on, unfortunately, by personal choices and <laughs> lifestyle. Um, but it can be reversed, which is so exciting, you know. Yeah. Yes. So give us some idea uh, for the viewers and the listeners to um, what are some things to look for? OK, as as the weight gain comes on or my child's reporting some symptoms, what are early onset symptoms that that might trigger? You know, a lot of people are like my dad is like, I don't go to the doctor if I'm not broken. Right. <laughs> right. Right. So. Help us identify some of the early signs and symptoms that one might start to think, ah, I should probably have some blood work done. Are you talking in regards to type one or type two? Both. Because, you know, say we've got a 12-year-old child and things are, you know, what are the symptoms, say, in that situation of type one? And then, you know, we've been inactive with COVID. Yeah. What is that patient maybe experiencing that might might key them into, uh, I should probably have, go into this a little deeper. Yeah. So obviously there's a lot of different symptoms that can um, sh- can show up that are can be for different um, diseases. But um, for type one, if you have a kiddo who, or even a young adult who's having excess thirst, they're having increased urination, they have a fruity breath smell, which is a very key indicator. If you can smell a fruity breath, like you need to have some labs done <laughs> at wow. your doctor. Um, so, and also, you know, if you're having increased urination, there could be something going on. Um, but those are usually the key indicators that if you see, um, or if your child is very groggy, um, that's something else. They seem like an altered mental state. They seem like, oh, you know, Johnny's acting very strange out of his norm. I have four kids. I They're acting weird all the time, but like different weird. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, something that if they don't eat, they feel like shaky. Um, definitely something to look for. And the best thing that I can suggest for parents is to keep a journal. Um, if you can report, you know, they were they were feeling this way on this date at this time. This is maybe what they've eaten because usually providers and doctors are going to want to know what 
what that week looked like? What, yeah. what led you up to that? Was it that he just didn't eat all morning and he was stressed for school? Maybe it could be something else, but if they, um, if they can see a visual of what that child's situation is looking like, they can better diagnose and try to rule some things out. Um, for type two, there are so many different symptoms. A lot mm -hmm. of them are similar to the type one symptoms, but usually these patients are older, um, anywhere between, you know, 20 to 75, um, it could, could be a patient diagnosed with type two. So if you have a patient that is, um, not able to go long periods without eating and they feel, they feel shaky again. That's the biggest symptom that I hear okay. from patients is that they're feeling shaky. They're feeling just weird. Um, they feel like, um, they're having increased urination a lot of times. And um, a lot of times it's found in their blood work when they're just having basic labs. And it's usually the early onset. You, I hear a lot of patients say, um, I don't have diabetes. I have pre-diabetes. I'm yeah. like, sister, <laughs> <laughs> actually, you just need to take better care of yourself. You can reverse it. You still have time. Yes. So, um, if we ever, hear that a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're ever told that you have pre-diabetes and you're like, well, I don't have any symptoms or maybe I could correlate some of these. Like, I feel like I'm not getting good sleep or I feel like junk, you know, every day. Um, just changing some of your, your diet can really just make a big difference. Um, even walking, you know, 30 minutes on the treadmill, which seems so crazy, but like last night I hadn't got my 10,000 steps in, which is one of the biggest things that I heard from a nutritionist is that if you can just get 10,000 steps in a day, which seems so, it's like so much. It's really not. It's not. It can yeah. change your entire health if you can get 10,000 steps in a day. So I set up a board on my treadmill and I put my laptop on there and I set it at 1.2. It seems very slow, but I got a mile in in 45 minutes. I got all my work done and there's just small little life lifestyle changes that you can do. Yes, I'd rather be sitting on the couch eating Cheetos, but you know, I want to hit my 10,000 steps sure. and just seeing that change is something that patients can incorporate and you know, they can reverse the effects of these these chronic conditions that they're they're seeing. So, and there's little things that you can do. A lot of people can do in their everyday um, routines that they don't even think about. I remember when I was the head marketing director at a, a shopping center in Oregon. Um, it was a Multi stories and our offices were in the top story. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm just not going to take the elevator anymore. Yes. Like, or even just halfway through the day, whatever it was, um, just taking the stairs. Yes. And I mean, I've never had a weight problem or anything, but I, I just for my, my, my breathing and my heart, you know, I'm like, I shouldn't be getting in this elevator 15 times a day. Right. I should be getting in this elevator maybe five times a day when I'm carrying something really heavy. Right. And the other times I should be taking the stairs. Right. It's simple little changes like that. Parking a little bit further away from the entrance to your work, yes. right? Trying to not find the closest parking spot when you pull into Walmart or Target when you're running your errands. Like park a little further out. There's just little things that you can do that you don't really even think about that can really help with that stuff. Yeah, I hear a lot of, especially like moms, that are struggling with, I want to get exercise in, especially coming into the new year and wanting that, um, you know, jolt of the new year. Yeah. Um, there's, like you said, so many little things that you can do that you can incorporate and the stairs at any place is a great option and you can go slow, you can go fast. Um, mm -hmm. run, especially if you're a nurse and you really, you know, you work in healthcare and you want to try to get that exercise in, but you just don't have the time. You're working 7A to 7P. Mm -hmm. um, doing the stairs is a huge win. So yeah, when you were a pharmacist, you used to try to do like I did push ups behind the counter. You would do push ups behind the counter, uh, but it was good for the. It was it was um, actually the patients loved it. Oh really? They would walk up and they would see me doing push ups, and I mean, there's no better way to set an example for them. Most definitely, you know. And it wasn't like I would be on this because I would do like twenty at a time and then okay. do them all throughout the day. But they would really get into that. They thought that was neat because I thought, you know, how can you be a healthcare provider and tell your patients one thing, but live a different lifestyle. Most definitely. You know, it's like, I, I, I've battled my weight my whole life. I'm still, still do, but I remember going to my doctor, you know, for my annual physical and I got that ugly word, obese. You're, you're pushing obesity, Right. but he's like 40% <laughs> overweight. I'm like, how do you coach people through that? If you don't live right. that lifestyle, right. I felt like, you're not the guy I really want to listen to, you know? So with that, um, child obesity is on the rise, as we know. Yes, definitely. Um, what, I mean, are, are we starting to see type two pretty young now because yes. of that? So I would say a lot of the patients, I, 
I help with a lot of patients that um, are seen in the Middle Tennessee region that are pediatrics. Um, obviously, there's a greater amount of type one pediatric patients and mm-hmm. type two, but you know, we can see it as early as 12. Usually we're seeing patients that are in their early twenties that are, sure. um, but you know, there's a good chance that maybe they had it starting when they were young and we don't do a ton of blood work on kids, you know, as long as they're not complaining of symptoms, which kids complain of random symptoms on a day that they don't want to sure. take a math test. But, right. Um, right. you know, we can see it as early as 12. I'm sure that Providers have seen it even earlier than that, and it's just masked by other symptoms, and they think maybe it's something else. Um, but yeah, we're seeing a lot of pediatrics because it's hard to do all the sports and do all the tests and prepare for college and try to be a great student, a great parent, and um, you know work and provide your kids with the healthy snacks that they need. Sure. And um, it, you know, trying to find those options can be very difficult. Um, I have a son who, um, of my four kids, he is obese. Um, but finding, finding those snacks without pointing it out, um, to just him, we try to get the exercise in, we're trying to do the things and he doesn't have any symptoms of diabetes, but just kind of being aware and getting educated about those things, just in case we do start noticing. But I think, you know, all kids go through a a plump stage. Sure. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So being able to just coach them so they feel confident. I think that's the biggest thing. If we don't make a big deal about weight, but we just coach them so they feel educated. They understand that nutrition is important. Um, You know, something I learned from my dad from him being on a continuous glucose monitor was he was eating grapes thinking they were healthy. Oh, yeah. And he was like, I am doing good. And then he put this on and he was like, my sugar jumped 70 points. Yeah. He's like, if I'm going to jump 70 points, I'm going to have one of those fun size Snickers. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Um, so educating our kids on that, you know, they we're setting them up for success or failure. So what do we want to do? We want to set, set them up for success, um, show them that eating small snacks, but healthy snacks, having the items in the pantry, like almonds, like cashews, like, mm-hmm. um, you know, peanut butter and uh, carrots. That's something that, that not only helps them feel like they are giving their body fuel, but also they don't don't feel bad afterwards. So they're continuing to snack. Um, I think especially with uh, social media right now, there's so much of an emphasis on kids to be perfect and look a certain yes. way. Um, you know, like with filters, like you want to look perfect yep. and it's, it's not, um, it's not completely, uh, it, it's not something that everyone can achieve and right, it's so, not realistic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think setting them up for success with nutrition so that they're educated um, will help their confidence later on in life and make it so they don't have a food issue. So let's back up. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Really quick. And it's not always about how you look like you're saying, yeah. right? Everyone wants to look a certain way. And especially with kids nowadays, like really coaching them and making them understand, like it's not about the size clothes you wear. It's not about any of that stuff, but it's about how you feel and it's about how you make it from your morning into your night and how you're feeling throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And just like really having them be more in tune with their bodies than looking in the mirror. Right. Right. Um, I remember, and I'm sure you guys do as well, like growing up, I was always just looking for a quick snack. And um, I didn't understand that if, oh, if I ate a piece of chicken, I'm going to feel better than just eating, you know, a pack of Doritos. Like, and that's, so that's what we try to preach in our house, that you're giving your body good gasoline, good fuel. Yes. Um, You can every now and then have a piece of junk food, like it's okay. Right. But if you don't give your body the fuel that it needs, the proteins, the healthy carbs, um, you're body's going to run out of fuel and you're going to be stuck on the side of the road. So, <laughs> so, so Allie, um, you know, I'm going to go through a scenario. Um, I've got a son that's obese, but I don't know proper nutrition. What are some good resources? Because this is the journey that we're, we're, you know, da- going down and learning. A lot of folks don't even know what that looks like. Right. So, I mean, I, it's inspiring to see a lot of people on social media walking through people, their experiences, but what are some good resources being, uh, you know, an RN that I myself could figure out what are good options? Because, you know, maybe maybe I'm type two right. and now I see my son or daughter going down the same road, but I don't know how to take care of it. Um, what, what are some good resources out there? Would you so say? something that I recently learned about, um, I'm sure you guys have heard of the food pyramid. Most insurances will cover up to six visits with a nutritionist for free. 
Ah, a year. That's awesome. Six visits with a nutritionist. That's and amazing. so I took advantage of that earlier in the year because I was just trying to understand what does my plate look like? Um, you know, I wanted to better be able to serve my family and my patients as well. So I took advantage of that. And it's something that you can reach out to a local hospital or even ask your primary care doctor about. Um, but you can get set up either virtually with a telemedicine appointment or in person. Um, and you'll speak to a nutritionist and they can come up with a game plan for you. So I think first of all, that's really, really important. It's something that we don't really know about and your insurance isn't really going to tell you about it because it's going to cost them to do it, but they're offering it to you. It's just kind of like a sideline program. Um, So that's the first thing. If you don't have the ability to do that, learning about the food pyramid, just going on Google and seeing, you know, what should I be filling my plate with? Uh, veggies are the most important. If you're super hungry, I get it. Like I used to eat all the time and, but filling your plate with veggies. Um, also if you look at your fist and fill your plate with, um, it, your portion size should not be more than your fist. So even if you're having a lean chicken breast and you you want to have a piece of bread, okay, we'll have a half a piece of bread and have a fistful of veggies and yes. try to, um, portion out your plate so that you're not just filling up on carbs first. Filling up on those veggies is super important. Um, And there's so many different types of vegetables available that will keep you feeling full. I feel like um, also protein shakes, you know, there's different types of protein shakes. Some are available at the grocery that are really good for you, but some of them are masked as protein shakes, theoretically, Mm -hmm. and they're mostly sugar. So um, learning to read labels, and that's something you can educate yourself on online. We're so fortunate to live in an age where there is so much information online and just learning like what's a normal serving size of carbs? What's a normal serving size of sugar? What should I expect to, if I'm drinking these empty calories, are they giving me protein? or are they just, you know, filling me up? Um, Because if you're going to do that, you know, you might as well be drinking Coca-Cola. But, you know, and then like with your protein bars, I feel like one of the big things that just spoke to me is there's so much protein, healthy protein in there. They're tasty. And there's something that you can incorporate into your, your, I I hate to use the word diet, but your meal plans. Yes. Um, And I meal plan. It doesn't have to be hard. It can be really easy and it actually can save you money. So I think um, for patients that maybe have a child or themselves or um, just a family member that they want to get in better shape and feel better, um, learning about nutrition, making it easy, coming up with a meal plan, talking to a nutritionist it are all things that they can do to help themselves prevent diabetes and also feel better. You know, like you said, being able to feel confident and walk and stand tall. It doesn't matter what size you are. It's how you carry yourself. And that's going to help you in your work and your relationships and everything every day. So, yeah. That's a, um, so what happens when we ignore the early signs of type 2? So I, I asked that question. I, I know the answer, but I want people to know how serious it is. I, we, we talk, we've talked about it you know, a couple of different times about because it, these things are going to happen tomorrow. Right. They're like, uh, I mean, I've had people that came into my pharmacy that just revolted against it. They're like, I'm going to eat what I want. I don't care. Um, but they will care um, because when you have to have dialysis or you have retinopathy or amputations. amputations. So kind of, I mean, you know, walk us through like, so we're pre-diabetes. Ah, it's not a big deal. I mean, kind of let people know the trajectory of what can happen if you don't take control of your diet early. Right. So I think that, you know, just speaking from the patients that I've talked to, a lot of times they don't address it because they don't understand the severity, but they also Mm -hmm. don't... um, they don't know what to do when they when they find out that their blood sugar is 200. Um, you know, mm-hmm. normal blood sugar depends on who you talk to. 70 to 120 is a great great range. Um, but you know, I I talked to a patient a few weeks ago who was like, I check my blood sugar when I feel bad. And okay, if you're a pre-diabetic or you're just starting to be diagnosed with type two, um, if my blood sugar is 200, what do I do? Like, I mean. I, I don't know how to treat that. So um, finding out and educating yourself on the steps, you know, for a lot of patients, it's taking a walk around the block that can make make a huge benefit on your health. Um, drinking water, things like that. So if they ignore those signs, if their blood sugar is 200 and they're like, meh, 
next week I'll deal with that. I'll call yes. my doctor later. I'm scared they're going to put me on a on a new medication. It's going to cost me money. I'm going to have to mm-hmm. tell my family that I'm unhealthy. Um, you know, in a year, two years, five years, you could start having kidney issues. You could start having that could affect your vision. You could have to start getting glasses, um, you know, doing different type of eye surgeries. But I feel like the biggest thing that is usually a wake up call to patients is when they have to consider dialysis. Like, you know, there's different stages of kidney disease. And if you get into stage two, stage three, you're talking about like your life is now shrunk like your potential for life has shrunk. This means you may not be able to go to Hawaii for two weeks because you have to go have a procedure done frequently, you know, two to three times a week. Um, and you're no longer in control of your life. Your your life is now controlled by healthcare. Um, and if you, if you let it go to that point, you know, there's a lot of things you can't reverse, which I think is really, really hard for a lot of patients that sometimes they only address it once they get to that that point. So, you know, patients have the, you have the ability to change the trajectory of your health at this point. If you're just starting to find out, um, you know, that maybe you've gained a little bit of weight, maybe you're not feeling great, maybe you're tired. Um, you can definitely reverse it with your eating choices. So I feel like the biggest things that they're going to encounter is kidney issues, vision, cardiac, um, It's scary. It's really scary to watch somebody. When I was um, working at Target, one of my cashiers was a diabetic and she was an older woman. And over the couple of years that I worked in this one store, she worked, as she was a cashier, she worked up front with me the whole time. She had to sit on a stool because she couldn't stand. Um, But I watched her lose her vision. I watched her get her toes amputated. I watched her get her foot amputated. I watched her get part of her leg amputated. And this all happened over the two-year period that she was working for me. And then I would see her on her break in the in the break room eating candy and eating <laughs> cookies and eating, you know, and she's just like, well, she goes, I know that, I know that this is what's going to happen. She's like, but I love this and I don't want to give it up. Well, it's, it's an addiction, honestly, you know, mm-hmm. and it, that's the biggest thing, you know, people acknowledge that it's an addiction and it's, it's really, really hard to break the norm, which is, you know, when I found these, that's when I would put my really big orders in for your cheesecakes. I'd send them to my dad because he was like, I only let myself have one a night, but it's something that I know that is good for me. And he's like, it's, it tastes so good. So it's breaking the cycle of that addiction and finding good, healthy alternatives. Um, And then we, I do think now, um, like you just are talking about constant glucose monitoring. I remember the days when poor folks had to prick their finger six up to six, eight times a day. Yeah. Um, so the good news is we do have some good ways to help you monitor. Yeah. But even early, I mean, you probably wouldn't need something like that. You're just keeping a close eye on things. But so we do have some good monitoring, you know, and, and for the type one folks, like you were saying, I feel like there's a little bit more optimism now because we do have better treatments um, insulin pumps, you know, yeah. constant glucose monitors. Yeah. So the constant, uh, continuous glucose monitors are really, they're changing frequently. They're continually updating. Um, I absolutely love them because patients are no longer having to prick their finger when they just feel sick or they have to remember to, you know, carry that around. They're wearing something on their arm or their stomach and they're able to continually see what's going on. But it's really great for having a family member, whether you have a kiddo or you have an aging parent, um, you can get alerts as a family member if they give you that option. So you can see if your kiddo's in second grade and, you know, his blood sugar is rapidly dropping, you know, you can reach out to the school nurse and let them know before they have that incident where they're falling down on the ground and, you know, they're having that embarrassment and this, the panic, a lot of kids have anxiety with it and they're very worried and moms are very worried as well. You know, um, it's something that this can help them take control of their health. And, you know, for an aging parent, they're able to stay in their home and not have to go into an assisted living. If you're able to you know, be able to monitor them. So it's a huge win and they're able to see trends. Um, you know, had a patient who we were trying to figure out why his, why he was spiking. Um, you know, on Thursday mornings, he always felt like horrible. Wednesday nights, we started looking at his blood glucose logs and realized he was, he was bumping up. And we're like, what are you doing every Wednesday night? He's like, oh, bingo. Uh... He's like, I, I didn't even think about it. Yeah, have sweet tea, but like, that's not a big deal. He's like, everyone else is like drinking and I only drink the sweet tea. And it's like, 
There's so you much know. sugar in sweet tea. Right. There's oh so, in the South, everyone loves sweet yes. tea. It's like a staple. Oh, yeah. But, you know, you're able to pinpoint what's going on and you can be more in control of your health with a continuous glucose monitor. Um, you know, a really great option. And I had just been talking to a friend about this. She is pre-diabetic. She currently would not qualify for a continuous glucose monitor. She went online and purchased one. And, you know, I was not aware. Like you said, a lot of patients don't know that there's these options out there. You can go to the pharmacy with a prescription. You don't have to qualify and you can pay a cash price, which is less than your Starbucks orders every month uh, for this for this option where you don't have to pick your fingers and, and you're able to be in more control and prevent those later on complications. Yes, so up. yeah, there's lots of options out there. It just speaking to a provider that is knowledgeable and all these, you know, rapidly evolving um devices. So I never even thought about COVID and how people were, you're right, stuck at home. And there was probably a huge increase oh in type gosh. two. Oh, drug addiction, yeah. alcohol. I, I thought about like, you know, suicide and drug addiction and alcohol. I thought about that. I didn't think about it's the same kind of addiction. It's yeah. you're just addicted to food and you know, it's, it's a cycle of your absolutely you're depressed, you're eating. And it's comfort. Right. And a lot of people couldn't get out to work out. And, you know, even walking around the block, people were scared. They were disconnected. And this this really gives them a lot of options. So, yeah. Any good forums that you know that you are part of or your colleagues are part of? I know a lot of people like to connect with folks um, um, that that are going through the same struggle. Um, I, I I, I'm not aware, but are there any good uh, diabetes forums that you would recommend these folks to start plugging into? Yeah. So um, there are obviously a lot of things on Facebook, um, mm -hmm. a lot of online groups in that fact. But I think that if somebody wants a group, let's say they live in a small town in Alabama, um, just reaching out, I think sometimes it just require someone to to start it themselves um, with those people around them because I think a lot of people want that community but especially like you said with COVID they not a lot of that stuff was not happening in person so I think a lot of people are connecting online I feel like and I only recently found this out but if they're on a certain medication um, let's say like Ozempic for diabetics mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of Facebook groups in regards to this people share their testimonies they also share like their struggles and they're able to connect with people. So um, medication specific Facebook groups are very much a thing. That's and you awesome. can connect with people that are maybe trying to get, even get off the medication or they're trying to figure out like, why do I feel this way? Um, or just like the struggle, like it hurts to stick myself every day. Who has a suggestion? <laughs> like, yeah. Or like sharing my misery for five minutes, yes. you know? And there's no one who... Uh, if there's nothing like having someone who's gone through the same thing that you're going through to just share, share your, your feelings. And I think those Facebook groups are really beneficial. So the ones that are specific to the medications that are on, they can search those on social media. Um, also searching hashtags, I think, but creating a group in person, like we're starting to see more activity of in-person events. And I think, you know, so many would love those, those type of events, but Many people aren't out there putting it on. So it, it's definitely an opportunity to, sure. to create something new. Absolutely. And it's free. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Most so are we, um, would you say we're trending, are, are we getting better at pro with meds and treatments and monitoring devices? Are we getting better at prolonging those opathies if we're a compliant patient? Like if, in other words, you know what, I'm diabetic. I've got to live with it. And we're not talking about type two, but um are there better treatments now where those opathies don't show up till later as mm -hmm. long as you're taking care of yourself? There are great options out there. There are amazing options. Obviously, we're continually evolving with medications, with devices, with um, treatments, with, um, you know, just the studies that are going on and what we're finding. Um, a lot of patients struggle to jump through the hoops. Um, and a lot of what I do on a day to day basis is helping them trying to jump through those hoops. And a lot of insurances just have these very strict requirements that they have to meet. So, yes, there is amazing technology and amazing opportunities for patients, but they have to educate themselves. They have to be an advocate for themselves because unless they're being seen by a provider that is educated on these things, they, it's very, very difficult to get approved for these medications or they're just astronomically expensive because they have not jumped through the correct tube. So um, can, 
you know, finding a provider that's going to be able to serve them in the best way. You know, that's one of the reasons why um, these continuous glucose companies are starting to go into primary care. Their focus for 2023 is focusing on primary care doctors because a lot of patients in these rural communities are not going to take the trip into the big city to be seen. You have to be seen as a diabetic every three months to be a continually approved for your medications. Um, So, you know, I hear from patients, I I can't afford to go into Nashville. You know, I live way out in, let's say, Waverly, um, way out in in Tennessee and on a farm. I can't make a trip in to Nashville every three months and, you know, wait to be seen and then sometimes even have to stay overnight. Like, I can't do it. So we're focusing on trying to educate primary care doctors so that they know what their requirements are so that they can better have in their tool belt these things to be able to get these patients approved. Because if a patient is... um, educated, they're going to stay on therapy. Um, But the biggest reason that we see patients fall off therapy is because they are not qualifying because they're not jumping through the right hoop. So um, it's interesting because my whole vision for patient um, pharmaceuticals has changed since um, leaving the emergency department and going into um, the role that I'm in now. It's not that patients are non-compliant. I found that I would say 90% of patients are not non-compliant. It's that they just don't have the access and they don't know how to access what they need to better their health. That's sad. So, yeah, that yeah. is really sad. That is sad. We're, yeah. you know, we're the, the world's superpower and our health care is lacking in a severe way. 100%. And a lot of it is controlled by people that are sitting behind a desk that have never seen a patient in their life. Um, and I used to think working in the ER, you know, I'd, I'd get on to patients, I'd be like, you know, why are you not taking it, your metoprolol or your your diabetic make it medications, your heart medications? And they'd be like, it, it's $2,500. Like, I can't afford that. Are you kidding me? Um, and it's like, this should not be a life-saving, life-saving product that they can't access. You know, they want it. They want to help themselves, but they, they don't have the access to that. You know, a, a middle America person is not going to be able to do that. So, yeah, yeah. We're, we're ran by business administrative folks in yes. managed care, which drives me absolutely crazy. And I'm sure as an RN, it does you too, because yes. uh, you're held up um, over people that have no clue about medicine or procedures. If you had just some some key takeaways today that you'd like to share, um, you know, some topics or some resources or whatever it may be, what would those, I mean, that you would want the folks today to know. And then secondly, I don't want to overwhelm you. Um, we will tag you in this yeah. podcast. Uh, if somebody's struggling, would it be okay if they reached out to you and just said, Hey, you know, uh, Allie, what's a, who's a good nutritionist that maybe I should consult or, you know, obviously you work with a lot of endocrinologists and physicians. Yeah. Is there anybody you would recommend? Cause I think people even get hung up there. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so well, anyways, what would, what for would sure. Say? Yeah. So I'd be happy to, um, to be a resource. I most definitely, a lot of times, you know, they just need that little bit of help, a mm-hmm. little bit of something, you know, with my dad, he couldn't get approved for the product, the CGM he was trying to get on. And it was just adding one little sentence in his chart note uh, to get him approved. Otherwise it was going to be $580 a month. And it was like, one sentence kept him from that. So, um, yes, I would most definitely be able to help, um, on my Instagram. I don't, um, I don't really share very much medical information. Um, I do have a TikTok that I'm on, but there's a lot of different resources available. Um, my biggest takeaway would be to find a nutritionist, like we talked about. Um, again, from what I've heard from a variety of different insurances, six to 12 visits a year is covered for free. You don't have to have a diagnosis of diabetes. Um, you don't even have to have an ailing problem. You don't have to be overweight. You just want to see someone to better your health. Again, they're not going to promote this to you or send you a mailer about it. <laughs> um, but if it's something that you, um, you're you interested in, it's definitely something to reach out um, either to your insurance or your primary care doctor about. Um, secondly, I feel like educating yourself and realizing that Nobody's going to save you. Like you have got to save yourself. You've got to learn about nutrition and find out like, you know, how, what kind of foods are superfoods that can help you? It doesn't have to be expensive. Um, it it's, can be your everyday meals. It can be incorporating, you know, one of the cheesecakes. I'm addicted to sugar. I love sugar. And that's one of the reasons I love the cheesecakes. I mean, there's something that I can incorporate into my day to day. Um, and then lastly, don't, um, 
don't underestimate the power of getting out and taking a walk because if you don't have the money for a gym mm-hmm. um you know if you don't have the money to buy weights or you know you don't even have the the motivation to start a workout routine walking around your block is better than nothing and it's going to keep you away from losing a toe it's going to keep you your kidneys working drink the water while you're going on a walk it's great for mental clarity it's great to prevent depression um it's also great for your kids to see you out there yes. doing the thing they're going to copy what you are doing so if you're um you know just laying around and feeling icky like we all have bad days but take them out on a walk my kids love to go on flashlight walks at night um they don't like exercising my especially my one of my kids he doesn't like exercising he's obsessed with technology like most other 12 year olds um but they love flashlight walks and we'll go and it's a great family memory it doesn't cost anything and it's one more thing that you can just incorporate and mm-hmm. you know especially with with everyone trying to get on these exercise plans it's like it doesn't have to be it doesn't have you dumb it down make it easy um and prevent prevent um you know a lot of chronic conditions later on yeah Absolutely. i feel like it's overwhelming don't you sometimes I it mean, is DM overwhelming yes personal fitness studio but yeah, the other thing too I wanted to just tag on to that is that there are a lot of insurances that cover gym memberships too. We just found and that out, we'll, by the way. Yes, yeah. and yeah. will help with gym memberships. Mm-hmm. A friend of ours, through his insurance, he pays, I think, an extra $30 a month on his insurance and he can go to like any gym. Yeah. So there are a lot of benefits um, that our insurances offer um, will help with that as well. Most definitely. Yes. I know that the YMCA here in the Middle Tennessee region, and I'm sure throughout the country, um, I know that they do sliding scale based on income. Yes. So when I was a single mom and I was not making very much, I was a staff nurse just trying to get by. Um, you know, they were able to get it down. It was like $25, $25 a month. And that included childcare, like oh, 12 wow. hours a week. That's so awesome. that means my kids could come with me. I could have a few moments to myself. I could you know, go sit in the spa. I could go do all these different things. And there are those options. Again, you just, nobody's going to come save you. You have to, you have to do it for yourself. And I think most of your listeners are probably already taking the first step. So they should feel very congratulated and confident that they're doing it. They're, they're making that change. Absolutely. Well, and Dana is starting to incorporate some at home, like hit type workouts. And I yeah, I started doing a motivation Monday. So every Monday I'm putting together like a little hit workout and posting oh, it on that. our Instagram. Okay. So I've done it two awesome. weeks in a row and they've gotten a ton of views. I think people really like, it. and it's just a few like four or five exercises um, that I'm just showing that are, are out of the norm. Right. You know? Yeah. And there's so much like that type of content. It's, it's available and it's out there yes. and you know, it's, it's easy. It's something you can do. You don't have to, I don't think for your workouts, do they have to buy any type of um, like dumbbell or anything like that? I use some equipment in some of them, but they, you can easily do it without. Okay. It's just, yeah, it's just high, like high intensity. Yeah. I mean, I, again, like I remember when I was a single mom, I took books like I would t- stack like my nursing textbooks and that was what I used as my weights. That's and you, awesome. you can improvise. Like there's gallons so many- of milk. You yes. take gallons and add water to them yeah. and use them. Yeah. I would have never thought of that. I would have probably just taken the milk out of my refrigerator and been like, okay, this is just what we're going to do. Yeah. No, there's so many like, you know, uh, furniture, those furniture moving. Um, um, little slatty things. Yeah. You can use them yes. on your carpet. Like yeah. you, uh, I'm actually going to do some, like I, I haven't done workouts like that, but I've been seeing so many of them now, even just taking a rag on your kitchen floor and just like putting it on one foot and sliding. Like there's so many just simple things that you can do at home. Yeah. Yeah, I like how, what you said though, just, you know, cause don't get overwhelmed. Just go walk around the block right. your first day. Yeah. yeah. And if you can't make it around the block, do half the block and right. then progressively add. And I think the key for fitness is making it something that you can enjoy. Right. So it's not so dreadful, right? Because I think um, so many people think that fitness has to be misery. The yeah. two are equated together and, and they don't. There's a lot mm-hmm. of things that you can do. I, not that I do it, but I think like the, the dancing stuff's fun to, yeah. for women yeah. to it get is. in. And- Back when I was in college, <laughs> it's a long time ago, <laughs> <laughs> I used to love to read fitness magazines or people magazine or like um, uh, the fashion magazines that would come out. Um, I love to read magazines, but I, w- I would buy them and I wouldn't allow myself to look through them until I was on the treadmill. Oh, okay. Because oh, wow. they used to have the little racks that you could put right. your magazine yeah. on the treadmill. So when I was in school, in college, I would buy them and I would have them in my backpack or sitting on the kitchen table, but I would not allow myself to look through it until I got on a treadmill. And then I could bring it to the gym with me or bring it to the fitness center in college. Yeah. And that 
so it like I wanted to look through it so bad, you know, even like the new um the swimsuit issues of Sports Illustrated, yeah. like all those different things. When they would come out with the new ones, I'm like, oh, I want to look through it so bad. But I wouldn't allow myself to until I was on a treadmill. That's and then awesome. I would just walk slow, like you're saying. Yeah. I would put it on slow, a little bit of an incline, and I would just go through that magazine. Because you forget you're doing it. I do that with oh, yeah. TikTok. Like I, I used to love TikTok, and I would spend – you'd fall an hour – of watching that and you wouldn't know, you know, you'd lose that hour. Instead, I sit on some type of cardio machine and it's like, you don't think about it, but you're getting that movement in, you're getting your heart Mm -hmm. pumping and you're doing for yourself. You leave feeling better and you know, it's so (laughs) easy to just go sit on the bike or sit on the treadmill. Exactly. Yeah. So I, yeah, there's so many options out there. Mm -hmm. I think people just have to have to utilize them. And I also feel like, like you said, just starting to walk around the block, but sometimes I feel, at least for myself personally, like I had a plan to work out and do a big workout yesterday. And I was like, well, if I can't do that, I'm not going to do anything. But then I was that's like, me. that's yeah. And I feel like almost so many people are like that. That's why I was like, okay, I'm just going to turn it on. I have to do this work. Yep. So like, it's better than nothing. Yes. Yes. Better than I'll always nothing. tell him that. I'm like, sweetheart, just go and walk. Get on the stair mill for 30 minutes. Yeah. Get on the stair mill for 20 minutes. Yes. Like that's all that matters. Right. But if he's going to get himself in the car and he's going to drive to the gym and he's going to get out, he's going to stay there longer than that. Right. Yeah. But once minutes. you get there, you know, like, yes. you know, then go for like, five okay. minutes, go for 10 minutes. Yep. And yeah, it's, it's a really great confidence boost and it's good for the mental clarity also. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's been a treat Thank having you. you. And Thank thanks you so for much. all the love, by the way, on oh, social media. Well, yeah. I absolutely love y'all. I love your, um, just your background and what y'all stand for. And um, I love that you help others. And it just, it's obviously also a really tasty product. <laughs> <laughs> Which we brought a bunch for you. Too. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. I am so excited. I always love trying your new flavors and I love seeing your reels. So thank yes. you so much for including me. Well, Thank we love you. and appreciate you. Best Thank wishes you. to you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you.